Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. It is time for me to finally get back on my rewiring project. I've got a 1968 Pontiac Le Mans, and I'm doing the complete wiring on the entire car. I've never done this before. Uh, I'm not a mechanic. In fact, most of the, the videos on my channel, I'm doing these things for the very first time. So you're following along with a newbie. And so if you've never done this before, hopefully it helps. If you've done this before and you have any suggestions, I could really use help down in the comments. But Anyway, uh, I've done a couple of videos so far. Um, I've done the overview video where I laid the wires out, talked about the tools I would need. I've done a video on installing the fuse box and a video on the front lighting section. The, the headlights, the turn signals, the parking lights, even the horn. Uh, I'll list those down in the description and the overview video up, up here. Uh, so maybe watch those before you get into this one. Um, but yeah, it's time for me to now move on to the uh, engine and the start charge section of the wiring. And uh, after that, of course, we'll move inside the car and then finally do the taillight video. So I'd love it if you could subscribe, hit that subscribe button now and follow along with my rewiring project. And nothing else to do now, but let's get to it. One of the first things I need to do is run a new positive cable. You may not need to run a positive cable on your project, but I do because mine almost caused a fire in my 68 Le Mans. Um, what happened is that Pontiac actually had a design flaw in their engines. They had a little metal tube that would allow the positive cable to get run down through the tube, down and through past the exhaust manifold, and down to the starter. And the problem is, is that it had a little asbestos lining that would protect it. And after 50 some years, of course that's gone in my car. And it rubbed up against the wire, broke through the insulation, and it started smoking really bad. You know, I, I was this close from the entire thing catching on fire. So uh, I've got to get a new battery tray installed. Then I can put my battery in and see pretty much where I need to have that new positive cable. Then I want to run the cable along uh, behind the inner fender and down along the firewall and to the starter. So yeah, let's jump on that now. Before I jump on this, I will say, if you take anything apart, make sure you keep track of your bolts. I actually had to order all three of these new battery tray bolts because I did not keep track of them, lost them, and yeah, had to spend more in shipping than it cost for the bolts. Okay, so I got the battery tray back in. Let's put the battery on there just to see how tall it is and see where I've got to run this positive cable. So here's where the battery is going to sit. I think because I'm going to try to run the positive cable up through here, down around there on the firewall underneath the steering, go down to the starter. I should be okay to have the battery positive on this side. The negative goes to the block. Um, so yeah, that's something I don't want to have to try to run the negative around the battery and go over this way. So I think this will work for me. I can also see where this is. So I've got everything that I need to make new battery connections. I've got new positive, negative cable. I've got new clamps uh, for the positive and negative. And I've got these for this for the starter. My starter is going to be down here, and so I do know that it's going to connect to this one. So as you can see, the kit that I got comes with several different sizes. This is too small, so I do know that the connection I'm going to need to make to the battery is this larger one. Uh, I'll only need this one over here, the one that's marked S. That will be with the kit cable that comes from the alternator, uh, or from the neutral safety switch. We'll plug in here. But yeah, I've even got some clamps that I can use to hold the uh, battery cable to the firewall, keep it nice and secure. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I need to install now. One of the things that I need to do as I'm doing the rewiring project is I'm going to have wires that I don't need. For example, this wire is runs up to the headlights, um, but it's not something I need. I can tuck this 
down in here, keep it out of sight, it'll back, be back behind the battery. But I don't want to just leave this end exposed. So what I did was I picked up a sort of a, a shrink tubing set. And I'm going to take a smaller one and I'm going to shrink wrap the ends of the wires that I end up not using so that it's nice and sealed off. I'll put it about halfway on here, shrink wrap it up, and that keeps that protected and not touching anything metal. And then I can tuck it away about back back in here in case I need it again later further. I think this was for the fan. What was this? Yeah, so this wire was for the cooling fan and I'm, I'm using the mechanical fan so I won't need this. But I don't want to cut it and not use it. I want to have it up here just in case. Okay, so that's nice and sealed off and I can get this up and out of the way. All right, so I'm not gonna put the ends on this because there's no need until I get a little farther along. Like I said, I think I know it should be right about here. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it around behind the inner fender well and over to there. All right, so give myself a little bit of slack. So now what I can do is put some clamps up here on the firewall, run it down to here, behind all that stuff, and then I can shoot straight down to the starter. Hopefully I can avoid any exhaust pipe and engine. If I need to, I can also run it along here. This is a 10-foot cable, so I can have it be as long as I need and then cut it. So let me put the clamps in now on the firewall, at least get it where I need it to be, and then I'll know more once I can put the engine in. Okay, I've got one in there nice and secure. So that's attached to the firewall and should be good to go. I'll just cut it to length once I know where the starter is at and what all I have to do with it. So I've got an extra two or three feet there to work with. Now I just got to put the engine back in. And through the power of editing, you'll magically see the engine appear. Oh, I guess I actually have to put it in. But that'll be in another video, so you can check that out if you're interested in seeing the Pontiac 350 go back into a 1968 Le Mans. And then we'll get to... Uh, wiring the engine and wiring the start charge system after I've got that in. Okay, it's several weeks later and now I actually do have the engine in the car and that's going to allow me to know where, how long I need to run the wire to the alternator, to the electric choke, the distributor, starter, and get all of this taken care of now. One of the things I did when I put the engine in, I made sure that I also reinstalled a ground strap that goes from the block of the head to the firewall. And this one is very important, making sure that you've got good ground connections for anything you might try to ground to the firewall. Yeah, because your negative cable is going to go from the battery, probably to the block, maybe to the frame. And it's just a very good idea to make sure that you've got good grounds and not just one of the things I did here was I had to actually had to sand it away, put this ground on and then repaint it because um, you do not want to ground over paint. Same thing on the block. I painted the block, but I also did sand away a little part of it and then I put the ground strap on there. So I'm going to start with the engine section of the wiring because it, for me, it's going to be the easiest, but I'm going to go over all of the wires just in case. There are eight wires for the engine section, and I only really have to use two. This one is going to be the wire that goes to my electric choke. And this is going to be my coil wire. Okay, so the brake line wires actually need to be inside uh, under the dash. I've got the type where if you push on the pedal, the wires are connected there to a switch there. So these are actually going to have to go back in the car. And just so you can see where that orange and white wire are going to be going, this is the little switch 
that will control the brakes. So when that the pedal is depressed, it releases that switch. So that's why I needed those two wires in the car. Brake wires back down in there. Get in your home. Don't you want to go home? I don't want to go up over the brake lines. Alright, you don't need to see me fighting with this, but this is one of the things when you're laying out your wiring. Read through the book. Check and make sure everything you need to put outside belongs outside in the engine bay. And if you do have the hydraulic brake switch, um, just keep in mind it's just something similar. You're going to see it down by your master cylinder and you will just run those wires to uh, that brake switch. So I can't really show everything because my car doesn't have, maybe it doesn't have the same things, but the book is great. Trust your painless book. These four wires I'm not going to need. Uh, I believe the green one is for the temperature sending unit for just the light that comes on if it starts overheating. The purple wire is for the tack. I do not have a tack. And the blue wire here is for the oil pressure gauge. And I've got a mechanical oil pressure gauge set up inside the car. This larger black and white wire is for an AC compressor and I do not have air conditioning. So what am I going to do with these four wires? Um, I don't want to get rid of them at all because uh, I may add a tack. Um, there's an AC wire in here and I may actually add uh, classic air conditioning at some point. So I'm going to cap these off, roll them up, and see if I can hide them back in here just in case I need them for a rainy day. I'm pretty much a hoarder. Uh, I hate to get rid of anything because I might need it someday. So I'm going to hang on to these wires. Yeah. So once again, they're all capped off. I'm going to roll them up, uh, zip tie them together, and stash them out of the way. The pink coil wire and my electric choke wire uh, pretty much the only ones I need to install now. So the, the coil wire is actually going to plug in here on the right side of the distributor cap. Uh, I've got this loose so you can see it. And it's going to plug in to this tab right there. If I did have the tack uh, hooked up, I would run the tack to this side. So... Considering I only need to go to right about here, I think I can cut the wire. I'll give myself a couple of inches here. I'll cut it off right here. Looks like it's about a 14 gauge wire. And there we go. Okay, shrink wrap is on. Got a little electrical tape just for precaution. And there we go. So my coil wire comes up and connects right in down here. Let's jump on the electric choke. And that one is gonna plug in right here. So I'll go ahead and cut it there. And I took out too many wires. If you cut one and you take off your wires, start again. There we go. I'm not going to solder this one. The shrink wrap should be fine. And I'll let this cool and I can go ahead and stick it right up there. That's hot. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect this up. The uh, ground is provided by the carb. 
so it's actually grounded out so make sure that that screw is tight in your carburetor and should be good to go and the only thing I need to do now I think is maybe wrap those two wires up so it doesn't look quite as messy and my engine section is done okay so I got those two wires taped up uh, there's a bracket that the red wire is hanging in and the pink one just comes right down here goes straight up into the distributor but looking keeping it pretty neat and because a lot of people have different things going on with their distributor basically my coil wire in my case was going to an HEI so I'm, I plugged it into the cap you can see the tack wire goes here um, if you do have a regular coil it would go to your positive if you've got a ballast resistor uh, which this car used to have um, it would go into the ignition side on the ballast resistor and then off to the coil and then they've also got a listing here in case you've got digital or MSD ignition check your book if you're not sure and hopefully it will cover your scenario time to tackle that star charge like I was mentioning there are three main wires those three connections are going to be to the alternator uh, the inline MIDI fuse, MIDI fuse that they include with the kit, and the starter solenoid. I'm going to start with the alternator. So I've taken out the bag included with the kit for the alternator. Um, it's got the, this is the MIDI fuse that I was talking about. Um, there are two screws to hold that down. This, I believe, goes on the back of the alternator to protect the wire and shrink wrap pretty much everything i'm going to need and uh, yeah let's get started okay so all alternators are different i'm going to kind of only be able to show you the kind that i have in my gm so you may have a one wire alternator you may have a ford chrysler other gm you know, newer gm there's a lot of different things the one thing that is consistent is the output wire the output wire is actually it comes with the kit but it is not part of the harness. It's actually a separate six gauge wire, uh, really long one. This one's gonna go to the MIDI fuse from the alternator, the output on the back of the alternator to the MIDI fuse and then on to, I believe, the starter. But again, we'll dive into it. But yeah, this one is the separate larger wire that is not in the harness. We're gonna be putting the post of the wire on here. If you do have a one wire alternator, this was gonna be the only one that you'll use. Um, but this is the, the B post. See where it says on there, BAT. I'm not sure if you can make that out. But this is the B post, the battery post. And that's where the, there is on my alternator, there's a smaller one down here. But this is the only one that we're gonna be that we're gonna need along with the these two here. To make that connection to the back of the alternator. We're going to use these three things. This is going to be where the wire goes in, the shrink wrap, and then this is the boot that will go that'll cover over the back of the post that sticks out of the back of the alternator. However, you do need to cut off this end. It's too small to fit through the wire. Um, so I'll just cut it off right there at the end. Then we can slide it onto the wire. You may need to use uh, a little bit of grease or something to help lubricate it to fit it on the wire. So I've got the end cut off and let's go ahead and put it on the wire. I do need to cut back about three-eighths of an inch off of this. All right, there we go. So shrink wrap I'm going to put on the rubber boot. Actually, I'm going to put the rubber boot on first. Yeah, that slides on pretty well. I didn't need any grease at all. Uh, maybe. I spoke too soon. <laughs> there we go. Slide this on. So I've got a little bit sticking up. I think that should be good. One of the things that I have to crimp is this large tool. 
and I'll show it to you here in a second. This is the first time I've ever used it. There we go. But as you can see, makes a nice strong crimp. It's not coming off. Then I can shield it with the shrink wrap and then the boot. So this is the crimping tool. Um, as you can see, it is for the larger sizes. This one does two, zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And you adjust it here based on the size. Um, so like 16 equals gauge six. Gauge four is the, the 25 millimeter, so you would just rotate this. You can pick this up um, brand new. I only am gonna need it when I do the battery cables, the, the big positive and negative cables and uh, that alternator stud. So I borrowed this from a friend, but Amazon's got them. Any pretty much big box uh, hardware store, Amazon, you can pretty much find these everywhere. But I know I wasn't gonna need this very often, so I just borrowed it. Okay, there we go. Nice and sealed. Now I just need to slide this boot up and we can put this on the back of the alternator. If you do use the shrink wrap and the black boot, I do recommend something to lubricate it. I used the uh, heavy duty silicone to lubricate or WD-40 you could probably use, but that helped it slide down this so much better. Because you want to be able to put on, you want to put this on the alternator, put the screw on and then move the rubber boot up. So let's go ahead and put this on. Also, I did bend it. Um, because it's gonna have to lay flat up against it and I wanted to be able to make sure it could then not get in the way of anything else. And where's my little, oh, little bunny? Did you just come in here? You did. I have a little visitor. Well, I guess he's gone. So there we go. All right, so I got that tightened down. Boot slips right on. Not a great fit, but at least it's protecting it. And then this will run down along my intake. And I believe we'll be connecting that to the MIDI fuse. If I can find it. So the red and white wires uh, are the two that I need next. These are also going to connect to the back of the alternator. The red one is the sense wire, the white one is the exciter wire. So I'm going to get these taped up and then I can run them over and along and over here to the back of the alternator and then cut them off. So I've got those taped off. They are running here along with the black wire and I should be able to cut them off right about here. So I've got the red and the white, got the little clips on there, and then I can do the shrink wrap. Uh, I just need to figure out, according to the instructions, it says one and two, red is one, white is two, but on this alternator it says R and F. So I need to sort of look that up and see what that is. So it stands for reference, which is the sense wire, and the F stands for field, um, which is the exciter wire. So, I know the uh, red one goes in first and then the white one, I just kind of had to make sure. Let's see, red to R and white to F. Oh, it's hard to do with one hand. There we go. I'll finish taping this up, but that's the wiring to the alternator now. My alternator is the GM SI. There's a 10 SI and a 12 SI. The 10 SI is the one with the fan behind the pulley. The 12 SI, I believe, covers up the fan that's on there. And of course, your alternator could be completely different if you're following along with this. The good news is, is they've got 
pages and pages for all of the different alternators, generators, and even the unfortunate Chrysler too. Um, so, yeah, they 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 cover everything with their own little details. Uh, but for mine, that's how I hook up the GM SI10. Next, we've got to install the MIDI fuse. Now, this MIDI fuse is sort of the uh, fuse between the alternator and the battery. And I believe that there's going to be a fuse down in there like this. We'll use the two self-tappers that came with it and mount it to the firewall, I think. Um, the trickiest thing is going to be where to place it. Maybe down in here. Um, because I've got to be able to go from the alternator to the starter to the battery back here. So let me think on this a moment and then I will get the MIDI fuse installed. Okay, so I've got the MIDI installed. And what's going to happen is this wire from the alternator is going to connect here. What's cut off is going to connect to the other side and drop down either to the starter or you can take it back over to the battery. Because this is a big cable and my positive cable that's already coming out of the battery is pretty big, I think what I'm going to do is drop it down to the starter. Got this end cut. Just need to bring it back a little bit from there and I can put my connector on. The rest of my red wire will go on from the other side, either, like I said, down to the starter or over to the battery. I need to get my shrink wrap on here. Always, I always forget the shrink wrap. And just need to pinch that off again. Should be good. Okay, I got it pinched on there, not coming off, and just need to shrink wrap it up. All right, so this is the 916 wire. This is the battery power source. This one gives all the power to the fuse box, I believe. And um, this one I need to, I only have to go from here over to here. So, in, you know, they, they assume maybe that you run this maybe closer to the front or near the battery or something, but I'm going to be cutting off a large chunk of this and then I'll connect that to the same side of the MIDI fuse as the alternator wire. So I've got the outlet on this one. That will run down. Go on that side. And this one will run down to this side. Okay, I've got that end on. Uh, this is going to go on the opposite side of the MIDI fuse. That side I'm just going to leave alone because I'm not sure again if I'm going to run it to the battery or to the starter. I'm actually now thinking maybe this the battery might be best just depending on how much I've got to jump around the exhaust to get to the starter so we'll see okay as you can see I've got both this line and this line from the alternator on this side the battery or, or starter wire on this side this is our fuse you don't put this in first you put these in first and then the fuse and then there are two Little locking nuts that will go on there next. And then we can just put the cover on. Now I did want to say do not hook anything up to the battery yet because this will this is all these are live wires. These always have power. And so uh, yeah, you don't actually want to hook up the battery to, or hook up any of these to anything yet. But I'll get the other bolt on there, get it tightened up, and we'll put the cover on and we're done. Now, at least with this. Okay, 3 8 inch socket. And I'm good to go. Everything's nice and tight. Didn't tighten them down crazy tight because it's going into plastic. But yeah. That part is done. So how cool is this? There is only one wire 
sticking out of the fuse box into the engine section. Very cool. Um, this is the wire that goes to the starter solenoid. So what I'm going to do is put the connector onto this end, run this down to the starter. Um, this one is not actually connected to the harness itself um, because this one is going to connect up to the neutral safety switch. This wire comes in off the harness and like I said it's not connected to the harness. Uh, but what's going to happen is I'm going to connect this wire to the neutral safety switch up under the dash. I'm not going to do it in this video. I'm going to wait until I have access to everything and can take care of it in the next video. So I had a major hiccup. I had planned at the beginning of the video to run my positive cable back behind here and go down to the firewall. I got the starter back in and it is literally right behind the exhaust manifold. So if you can see the exhaust manifold here, it drops straight down right where the solenoid is. So what I'm going to have to do is run my positive cable here. I'm going to run it under the tray, go down front and run it along the oil pan. Then it's just going to be a straight shot over to the solenoid. Um, just got to find a good spot so that this isn't, all these moving parts aren't going to cause any problems. But I also have to have enough slack so that when I drop the starter, the wire can go down with it. And so what I may end up doing is just leaving a little slack on this side. And then if I need to drop the starter, I can remove the post and then give it, feed it some wire and then I can drop down the starter. So a little problem getting this situated and then I can take care of that solenoid wire. Okay, so I've got the wire uh, with the connector on it from the uh, MIDI fuse and now I'm just putting on my positive battery cable. I've got the positive battery cable hooked up and I just got to heat shrink it and that'll be done. And now I've got my negative post hooked up. Just shrink wrap this and cut it to length. I only have to go from here to the negative post on the battery so I'm going to sort of eyeball that and give myself a little bit of slack and cut it off. I'm going to run it underneath the power steering lines. I made sure to uh, also remove the paint. I sanded it down all along the ground so that we've got a good block ground. Just need to tighten this down. And yeah, we'll be able to attach to the battery. So my ground is done. Got the positive side done. I just need to run everything back to the starter. The other thing that I've done is I've taken the purple wire for the starter solenoid and run it under here as well. I'm going to take that down with the positive cable run it along the oil pan. I've got my connections for the starter. Uh, the one that's for the starter solenoid will go on S. I will say it is important to give yourself enough slack that you can drop the starter down and put the wires on or even if you only have to drop it a little bit that's good too but Give yourself enough room to be able to put the cables on and off. And then, of course, the big battery cable, lock washer, that's going to go on the big positive cable. And there you go. If you have a ballast resistor, the brown wire would go to this. I've got the HEI distributor, so I'm not running the ballast system, but that brown wire would run down to here and attach on this post. So this one is marked S. I think this one is marked R. 
um, at least on my starter. But if you're not sure, you can of course check the book. I will get these tightened down, get the starter back up, and that is the start charge system. All right, so that's going to do it for the engine section of the rewiring project. Uh, in the next video, we'll be moving inside, like I said, and it's going to be a little scary for me because once I saw that big pile of wires down there, I thought, oh man, this is going to be a nightmare. Got to take the steering wheel off, remove the instrument panel, get all those big bundles of wires all taken care of. And uh, But I can do it, I think. I'm growing in confidence and I'm taking it one wire at a time. Uh, you kind of have to do it that way and it's not, it doesn't quite seem so bad. One little section at a time and it's not horrible. Um, and then after that we'll do the taillight video and then test it to see if everything works. I'm sure there'll be some problems along the way and I'll have to troubleshoot that. So subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it, it really helps me out and hopefully it helps you out. Uh, like the video if you got anything out of it and leave me a comment. Uh, if uh, you have any questions let me know in the comments. And also, if, you have, if you're doing this yourself, following along, reach out to Painless. Their support system is really good at answering questions. They usually get back to you pretty quickly, and uh, they know a lot more about this than I do. So, uh, yeah, it, reach out to them. Also, leave me in the comment. Leave, leave, me, leave a comment. It'd be great if I could talk. Leave a comment if I got anything wrong. Uh, I don't want to continue moving on. If you saw a problem or if you saw that I got something wrong, let me know because I need to fix it before I do try to plug everything in and get this started. So I'd really appreciate it if you could comment. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will catch you next time.